a sorcerer named Zarok. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. So he raised an army of demons and set out to take the realm for his own. The king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia into battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude, how demons fell before him like wheat before the scythe, and how at last, though mortally wounded, he destroyed the sorcerer utterly. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galloway and a time of peace began, which was to last for a hundred years. And then, the sorcerer returned. And wellity, wellity, welcome folks. Welcome to another Let's Play being done by yours truly, Grandmaster Scottay. And we are playing Medieval. One of the most unique games on the PS1 and one of the most beloved games on the PS1. So beloved is in fact getting a remake. I'm definitely looking forward to that. But for now we're playing the PS1 original. Look at all that blocky blocky goodness. Now. Got ourselves a nice little menu here. So we either have a new game or low game. We go new game, of course. No more cutscenes. So as you saw from the intro of that game, our main character, Saint Daniel Fortescue, is dead. But not for much longer. We get to see how he dies instead. 
Uh, right, we're going to see an epic cutscene here. We're going to see how he slaughtered his way all the way through to Zarok and... And he's dead. Died at the first volley. You. Yes, I wanna. What do you look like in real life to have that skull shape? And that much jutting out teeth. Anyway, we're in Dan's crypt. Which I guess you could say is like the training level or hub level. I don't know what you call it. It has risen again. Sir Daniel Fortescue. See? The hero of Galomir who fell at the first charge. The fall yeah, that's of war what I do in battle. and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the saviour of the day. I don't know why that always makes me laugh. But we know it's better. Look at the alone. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Zarok and live up to the legend. We hope it does well. I hope I do well as well. Mainly because, you know, I'm the hero of this game apparently. Anyway, we have Sir Daniel here. Look at that analog control. And we have a sword. X to swing, circle to jump, square to do a special attack, and let's see, what a cam yes, this is back in the days where you didn't have analog stick for camera, so L2 and R2 give you your camera controls, and if you hold down square, you do a charge attack. Whee! Double tap if you want to run. Always good to do. Anyway, we've got a book here. Free for another paddle in the shallow water, but don't be tempted to go for a swim. Buoyancy could be a problem for those of a dead disposition. Yep, Daniel cannot swim. He can walk in water, so it's not like in um, Symphony of the Night where you just die immediately when you fall in the water. Well, you don't die immediately, but you know what I mean. And we have a shield! You see, triangle uses your shield so you can block projectiles and attacks and things. If you notice there's a number by your shield, which is like a big shiny penny for the WWE Tag Team titles, that means your that's your shield health. If it's hit too much, it breaks. Any treasure you find will go to your coin score, depicted in the top right of your display. Coins are used to buy items from greedy merchant gargoyles. I wonder if they call them greedy, I mean they just want their business, don't they? Now this is prime PS1 entertainment right here. I own this on disc, but I'm using an emulated copy so we don't have the same problem that we had with Resident Evil 2. The whole uh, taking 10 seconds to load everything. This is a secret wall, we can't get through it, so we're going to have to come back later for that. There's not really much we can do. Oh, there's a little lag. This is a life bottle. These work in the same way. Have you ever played Metroid? So that's basically, yeah, 300 health, and those life bottles work as reserve things. Now here we have some throwing daggers. These are our ranged weapons, well, one of our many ranged weapons. That little green thing you see on there is an automatic lock-on. And we just unlock that the star ring that we collected. Select brings up your inventory and also allows you to see your keys. Oh, and also, should you break your weapon or lose it, you can use your arm. And it works as a boomerang. How can you hate this game, people? Anyway, let's get on out of here. So why am I deciding to do this game? Well, like I said, I like horror games. I like... Uh, PS1 games, and I like different games, and this game ticks off all three. And I do actually have a bit of a funny story of this game, which I will tell in a second. But first we go to the first level, the graveyard. So the first time I ever played this game was actually when I was on holiday when I was younger, going to a holiday park in Cornwall, I want to say? And this is back in the day where you had those, um... Show my age a little bit here. Do you remember those uh, big kiosks that you had in like bars and clubs and things? Um, where it would just be like a PS1 plugged in with a game like playing on it and you had like the controllers sticking out and everything. Yeah, I saw them at like pubs and clubs and family places and um, you know, kiddie centres and that. And uh, the one where we were on holiday in Cornwall, the uh, club bar they had there. Um, I had a copy of Medieval going, so while my parents were enjoying dinner and drinking, I was playing Medieval. Always fun to do. <laughs> Welcome back to your beloved Galamere. The stinking dead have risen to dance to the lifeless living. And they want to do it over your dead body. 
How fun. Anyways, this is combat. Swing away. You don't really have a lock on. But you don't really need to since the attack is really simple. Let's do a nice big swing. And hey -ya. Oh, we got hit on that one. Smash, smash, smash. So you can see there's a little chalice next to us there. This is how the game works in terms of, you know, battling and leveling things. Basically, in every level, there is a chalice to collect. In order to collect the chalice, you need to get that chalice meter to 100%. You do that by beating enemies. And if you wish to get the complete ending and get the bonuses, you need to fill the chalice, com find the chalice, and then complete the level. Over which you'll be taken to the bonus area, which I will show you. I will be going for all chalices in this run. This is a healing fountain. It heals you. It also allows you to fill up bottles, but there's only a finite supply of magic in those, so you can't just keep going back every time you get hit. So smashy smashy the zombies. We found a chaos when you can actually hit the hands, but we don't have a tool that allows us to hit them yet. We've also got more gold! Yeah. So I'd say that this game has actually aged pretty well in terms of controls. Dan handles really well with like the 3D movement and things. The combat's PS1 combat. You don't have a lock on, but you do have very like a good arc of attack here, so you don't have to really worry about missing or accuracy or that much. And you get a wide variety of weapons, both ranged and melee, so you know, very, you've got a lot of uh, choice when it comes to this. I mean, there are a few things that hasn't aged particularly well, like with the camera system and everything, but um, on the whole, it's quite a good, you know, it's aged well, and I can see why it's getting a remake on the PS4, which I'll definitely be getting and playing. I want a Spyro one. I can do Spyro on this channel at some point. It's not exactly horror, but it's got horror levels in it. I'm rambling already. Anyway, we picked up the rune, so that allows us to go through the door. Hiya! Die, zombies, die! It's a lot easier to kill them here than it is in Resident Evil. Remember, nothing remains hidden under the gaze of an angel. Nice little hit there for our upcoming challenge, so let's charge up our sword and... Yeah! There's two ways of healing in this game, there's our chalice by the way. There's two ways of healing, one is by finding small vials, well actually three ways of healing I should say. One is by finding small vials, which allows you, which like, gives you like a small health boost. The other is by finding those healing fountains. And the final way is by finding like full life bottles, like the one we found in the crypt. This object here is the chalice. Every time you dispatch an enemy, the chalice fills a little more. Once the chalice is full, of it is yours to collect, and you will be worthy of visiting the Sacred Hall of Heroes to claim a prize. The chalice will be found in every region of Galamere. They're hidden. They are all well hidden or well guarded. Only a true hero can the full set. Well, we are a true hero, ladies and gentlemen. And as you see, we can't collect it yet, so we'll come back a little bit. Kill those zombies, and then we'll unlock the gate by smashing this. I said by smashing this. There we are. And let's just continue on with our exploring. There's quite a lot of exploring you can do in this game. Like there are bonus levels and hidden areas and things like this. Oh, we just got another life up. And let's get to the mirror. Okay. Slashy, slashy, the deadly deadies. This is a merchant. Now, merchants are a little interesting in this game. They allow you to buy supplies, like, you know, fire and things. You can buy weapons from them, but only after you've unlocked them. If that makes any sense. And now the chalice can be collected, as the game tells us. So, what that means is that, um... Say, for example, later on, there you, you unlock a club that you can use as a weapon. Now, um... If that club... It can... it does get damaged over time, and, it can be, and other weapons can be taken away from you. So, if you've unlocked a weapon, you can buy another one. But it's only if you've unlocked them in the first place. What's this stored in? The living world lies beyond these skull gates. The master of Hilltop Mausoleum, the stained glass demon, has possession of the skull key. So we have to come back here later to unlock this door if we wish to proceed and go into the town. Anyway, let's unlock our chalice. Now the Hall of Heroes awaits. Let's find our way out of here. Let's see if we can also find that gold. Hi -ya 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 -ya. Look at that high step and high step. Yeah, we can't jump over there, so getting from that side is not going to happen. 
Money isn't really too much of something you need to worry about, like, like I... It's not really something that's in too, like, you know, short of supply or anything, and... You do have to make, like, there are some purchases you have to make for, like, your ammo and things, but other than that, you know, much. You won't really be buying too much in this game. Grab that. And we got some water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clash you down, and we got ourselves another shield to replenish ours. I find the shield's best to use against enemies that have, um, what do I call it, like range, range weaponry and things, or like things like that anyway. Very softly, Zarek awaits beyond these gates. The master meets with the demon from the mausoleum, hatching plots of purest evil. Forgotten nobodies would be wise to make themselves scared. Who are you calling a nobody? So that's level one complete. And because we got the chalice, we go to straight to the Hall of Heroes. Whoosh. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. If they think you're worthy enough, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. So that's how the Hall of Heroes works. So you need to find a statue of the hero that you're looking for. It, the one that's glowing green is the one you can collect something from. So as you can see, the other statues are, you know, not glowing, so they have nothing to say to us. But there is one right here. Captain Fortescue, it's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? I do love how Dan talks just through those I wish I because he doesn't have a bottom jaw. Again, sir. But hold, you could take my crossbow. It's got rapid fire and it can ricochet the darts off walls to shoot around corners. I used it at the Battle of Galamir. After you were slain, I shot Zarek's champion, Lord Cardock. A clean kill through the eye at some thousand yards. Of course we'll accept the crossbow. Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. <laughs> oh, goodbye, sir. I love all of these guys. This, this, I say this is one thing about this game. This is probably one of the funniest games on the PS1. And humor is something that's pretty hard to pull off in games, I find. But yes, we have a crossbow. It's rapid fire, locks onto enemies. Very useful. So let's leave the Hall of Heroes and go on to the next level. Good old fighting Dan. So as you can see, for every level we complete, we unlock more. And so now we move from, we'll save our progress. Very good, and we'll move on to Cemetery Hill. Ooh. One has to love a good cemetery level. So let's see what we find. Cutscene. In-game in cutscenes. Always classy. I love that fog of war for the old PS1 days. So, even from the shackles of death, my old enemy pursues me. You're too late, Fortescue. Already my army has risen from the grave. You will never leave this necropolis. <laughs> I'll show you. I always really like that word, necropolis. He's made boulder spitting gargoyles. Well, one boulder spitting gargoyle. Apparently, one just you just lit it up a little. Anyway, look. Some obstructions can be smashed out of clubs and certain other weapons. So try experimenting. We'll do. Let's try out our new crossbow. See, looks on nicely. Let's bring back our sword, though. So it's telling us that we need to find a club or some kind of rock destroying weapon. Let's swing down, see what we can find. Lava. Can I imagine falling in that is not going to do us any favours. Also, careful touching knees. Why? Because... 
big old nuke bomb. Very useful for clearing out enemies, just make sure you don't get hit yourself. Any gibs an enemy, doesn't it? Hello, merchant. What do you have to say? Apparently he's asleep. Okay, we picked up an energy vial. Oh, hello, zombies. Oh wait, no, just more torso bits. also to mention, great soundtrack on this game, very, I'd say this game is very Tim Burton-esque, I guess you could say, like with that deranged horror sort of thing. Yeah, the PS1 was where it was at for great games. Of, of great archaeological interest, destroyed a boulder and plundered the valuable treasures within. Well, oh, well, if we had something to destroy it with, we'd find ourselves a club. Smack that grave, because it's always fun to do. Let's see what we can find for ourselves. Let's see, we explored. Here's where we came in. Yep. So let's tackle the hill then. Trying to get hit by the boulders. Yeah, we're not. Well, I think we do need to find a club first. I know it, it must be around here somewhere. We can't actually get past the rocks unless we break them or something. Do you have anything to say? Oh, now you're awake. No, that just gives us ammo. Let's have another little explosive round, make sure I didn't miss anything. So we're not getting through there. Take on the tower and hope we find a club on the way up. If we can jump those rocks. Yeah, we can jump the rocks, that's good. Skibbity, skibbity. Adventure would be wise to, wise to be thorough in an investigation of an area. Hidden treasure. Yeah. Hidden locations would be great rewards. Well, we'll travel inside. Explores a bit. 